How's everybody doing? How, uh, it's Keith Holdis. How you doing, Keith? Uh, Joanne, uh, Rebecca Swindle, Lena, Diane Gallagher, Sherry Montgomery, Rita Holman. Uh, who else? Reva Edwards. The sun is hitting the back of the cell phone right here. Uh, I already cut the music. <laughs> I know new music, no music. That sucks. Uh, Carrie Miles, also, how you doing? Miss Joe Cash, how you doing? Uh, Miss Bobby, how you doing? Send you a big hug. Teresa, send you a big hug, Teresa. And Titi. Shayla uh, Robertson, how you doing? Mr. Greg, Mr. Craig. <laughs> Not great, Craig. Rain, how you doing? Uh, Ms. Wen Baskets, how you doing? Send you a big hug. Herman Kane, how you doing? All the way from Ohio. Uh, Geneva Lambert. Marilee Meredith. You live? Yes, I'm. I'm still alive. Uh, are you saying you're live on Facebook or I'm still alive? <laughs> Nancy Shields, uh, Bruning. Uh, hey, Blue Long Time No See. Yeah, it's been a couple of days. Come on. Uh, Marcel Richardson say hello Danny Gastelum how you doing y cuando le regresan a México el territorio que le robaron los rateros y cuando le regresan a México el territorio que le robaron los rateros que territorio Pablo dime cual dime cual territorio yo creo que si nos vamos por prioridades primero tenemos que decirle a los españoles que nos regresen todo el oro no no crees Dime de qué territorio. Y ahorita hablamos. Uh, there's really people that they just want to get into it with me. As soon as I go live, people want to get into it with me. Uh, how are things going in Mexico? That's what I want to talk to you guys about a little bit. Uh, you know, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how's Tijuana. This couple of days that I, you know, I just, you know, we just returned back from Tapachula and, and, uh, saludos from uh, Bogaluz, Louisiana. Uh, I should have paid attention in Spanish class. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's people arguing things that they are really stupid, and what is done is done. So you have been quiet. Yes, I've been quiet. Uh, I've been quiet because I took a couple of days off. Uh, you know, when I just wanted to relax a little bit and I just took Saturday and Sunday off. So I think that Saludos, un Oscar, un abrazo, saludos, Dinora Beliz, saludos, saludos. I want to talk to you guys about things that have been going on right here in Tijuana and regarding the shelter that it was supposed to uh, be built. The 5,000 people shelter. You're looking awesome. Thank you so much, Debbie Russell. Uh, so, I want to say hi to everyone. I'm Oscar Blue for uh, Border Network News and also for America's Voice. Uh, thank you so much for watching me. Uh, thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much for everything. I, I will get into a little, you know, comment that they just made because there's a lot of Mexicans that they still are on this... Uh, you know, on this trip that the United States owes Mexico his territory back that is apparently California, Texas, and a little bit of Utah, I think so. So, you know, I will I will try to uh, elaborate on this subject because that's the problem with Mexico, and that's the problem with Mexicans. We're not educated on the fact that we need to set on priorities. And the thing that is on priorities, if there's a guy coming in here and telling me, you know what, when are the, you know, these people are going to return back our land. Uh, good afternoon from Colorado. Maybe America need to invade Venezuela to help the poor in Colombia. Uh, how you doing, Moses? I will get into your comment and to, into like several subjects. I will get into it as soon as, let me just get out. Let me just get all these things out that I have been saving for this couple of days. 
that I've been reading a lot. I've been in this cave in my house and uh, I've been reading a lot, uh, you know, a little bit upset of how things are being managed. And and really, I uh, it's, uh, it's been kind of like I've, I've felt sad a little bit uh, for several things that have been going on in our country. And it's it's things that uh, it's things that we as as we're as we are learning more and more and more and more. You get more upset. Sometimes you're you're up. Sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're in the middle. It is really a roller coaster. Uh, being involved in this kind of a uh, uh, live streams is really a roller coaster, man. It's not always stable. You're not emotionally stable all the time, perfectly emotionally stable. Whoever is saying, whoever freelancer is saying, I'm always good, I'm always all right, I'm always great, he's lying. <laughs> he's lying. You know, there are days that they're good, there are days that they're bad, but it depends on you and it depends on how motivated you are to go and get it. That's how it is. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about it, what's going on. You know, this shelter that it was going to get built uh, for 5,000 people it backfire on the owner of the property so right now supposedly they're not gonna get they're not gonna use it as a shelter but I want to elaborate a little bit on this you know I'm I'm, at, I'm you know I'm, I'm listening to your comments if you can elaborate a little bit on your comment on the feed just uh, just a little comment so I won't stop and read it and I will I'm listening and I'm viewing whatever you guys are writing so I can immediately jump to that subject that you guys are saying like you can put uh, immigration on Texas and I'll be like okay this guy wants me to talk about immigration in Texas uh, poverty in California okay I will get into poverty in California like that kind of stuff and you know I will immediately jump so uh, hola Ruth como estas hola Oscar aquí presente guapo chulo de que bonito andas bien quemado cuídate <laughs> hola Mari como estas uh, you know, uh, let me elaborate a little bit on the comment. And this, I need to do a segment with the reality of what happened with Texas, California, Utah, and all these things on, on the war between Mexico and, and the United States. Okay, Bill, I'll get into it in a minute. And, you know, I will, it's, it's a long subject, but for that guy that just commentated, you were not even born when that happened. You were not even born when that treaty of our president Santana let and sold our country. It was not the United States. It was our president that sold our country to the United States. It was not the United States. It was our president it's been always our government. It's been always our fault. Get your facts straight, man. Really, get your facts. Read, man. Read. Educate yourself on history. On history. On Mexican history. You know that that is the thing that it really upsets me because that's one of those things that I, I'm not accustomed to change, man. And... Right now, on on when it comes to junior high school, high school, and college, now they take universal history. They don't take Mexican history as a as a as a subject. They don't take uh, United States history in schools. They don't take it anymore, or they don't teach it anymore. It's unbelievable. And if you're a guy, if you're a guy, so this guy, man. If you're a guy that is talking to me about, you know, the United States taking away California, Utah, and Texas, that you're that kind. If I'm freezing, go out, Sherry, and come back. Uh, if you're a guy that is talking about that subject, we need to get priorities, brother. And the priority is that if you're talking about who took who, let's look back in history and then just go back and ask Spain to return us all the gold that they stole, how they conquer our, our, our territory and how they conquer our country. Let's just go back 
and priorities, it's with Spain. You know, it's with Spain. They conquer us, they slaughtered our women, children, our culture. So let's just take priorities. And if that is the case, well, let's just go back to Spain then. You're talking about a little piece of land. California, Texas, and Utah, whatever it is. Let's go back in history and prioritize on the number one thing that happened in our country. We got conquered by Spain. So let's just fight against Spain now. And tell the Spaniards to return back all the gold that they took. It's just the stupidest analogy is coming into my feed and telling me, when are you going to tell the Americans to give us back our land? It's just stupid. It's like me saying right now, you know what? I want to talk to Spain. And for everybody that is living in Spain, I want to tell everybody, it's time that you guys return all the gold that you've stolen. It is because of you that we are in this economical failure and their out education is real like that is it's the worst. Do you know how stupid that will look? I will tell you a little bit of history for that guy. For that guy. You know that Cuauhtémoc, the last emperor, die. They burn his feet. They burn his feet as torture the Spaniards for him to release the secret of life. Because he was the only one that took in Hernán Cortés, one of the leaders of Spain, to one place in the pyramid that they that they have try to search and search and search, but they can't find it. Cuauhtémoc told Hernán Cortés, this is the secret of life. That's why Hernán Cortés was so persistent on conquering Mexico. It's not because of the gold. It's not because of the land. It was because of that secret of life. They can't find it. It's encrypted. So, let me tell you a little bit of a story just for you to know how dumb you are with that, with that comment. We were an, an, an empire. We were, do, we were so rich. We were the best in the world. Aztecs were the most important and rich people in the world. And we got conquered by guns. And exchange, we were exchanging mirrors for blocks of gold. Imagine how rich we were. How rich we were. That a Spaniard came with a with a with a mirror and said, "Look at you! Oh, oh! Can I get two of these? Uh, you know, two blocks of gold, please? Yeah, take them. We were so rich that we have them on the backyard, like the Guatemala citizen is saying that he has bananas on the backyard. We were like that, but with gold. So if you want to go back in history, stupid, really, because that is an insult. What you're doing? If you if you want to go back in history. Let me educate you a little bit. We were so intelligent. Do you know that Cuauhtémoc's sons, he had two sons. They took those two sons as host, as, uh, as, as, uh, as prisoners to Spain. And the best astrologists in Spain were being taught by Cuauhtémoc's sons that they were in their mid-twenties how to elaborate the sky and how to and how to and how to tell which star is which star how the planets move we were so smart and intelligent we got conquered that's what happens when you get conquered so if you want to go back in time and talk about priorities with land let's start but let's start when we lost our country, not a little piece of land. Let's start when our ancestors, the Aztecs, fought to their last breath to defend this flag. This one. This one. To defend his land. Not like Santana. Santana was a president that sold us out. He didn't care about our land. He didn't care about the Mexican people. And a lot of people were saying he was young, he was handsome, and he was forced. Hell no. You don't lose our land. If you don't sell it, you don't sell it. But if you want to go back to history, go back to this history. 
where ancestors, Aztecs, the ancestors, to the last breath, fought for our land. So that right there, brother, that is where you need to start if you want to demand your land and your riches back. If you want to demand your riches, go back to the people that they stole in from us. Do you know that in Spain, they have a statue? And I will tell you, go and research. That's what, that's what you... Uh, uh, no disrespect, but you can clearly educate. You can't clearly educate somebody by calling them stupid. Not nice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that is just me talking to another Mexican, and that's how we relate to each other. Because this subject is, I'm I'm exhausted of telling this subject for millions of times. And if you got upset because I'm calling somebody else stupid because of his argument that he just did right now, that is completely a stupid argument. I'm sorry and I apologize for you, but to the person, no, because I'm Mexican and I live over here and I know my history and he knows his history. And if he doesn't know his history before he goes into this feed and opens up his mouth, please read a book. Please read a book because you're touching a subject that is involved in my history. I, I love my history. And that makes me upset that that is why I was... I was, I was locked up in a room this whole week thinking, what the hell's going on with our country, man? Saludos, mi Richard. Un abrazo. What the hell's going on with our country, with our women, with our people, with our culture, with our, with our, with our customs? What the hell's going on? Yeah, I know that uh, some of you are yucky. And these are the things that they don't understand if you want to if you want to demand history demand first go and read this go and read let me just get this out man go and read how this started go and read how this started how this started go and read that go and read it Read your history, man. And if you if you want to demand, if you want to demand property back, demand Spain that they have a statue in one of their main cities of one of the conquerors that that it was more most violent in our country at that time, standing with one foot on top of an of an of an anastic warrior, beheaded. Learn history. Learn it. You don't see a statue of a, of a Mexican warrior or a Mexican soldier in the United States, uh, an American soldier standing on the head, right? You don't see that, right? You don't see signs of Americans saying, aha, we conquered you like they, they have in Spain, right? Have you read a, 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 a book from the history of Spain? How they elaborate in arc and when they conquered us? It's just a joke. They make us feel like a joke. So if you want to go back and talk about property and how they stole from us, if you want to make that point clear, go back in history and defend first this against the people that they conquer us because you're talking about a time that you were not even born. I don't want to get into it, but it's like people talking about slavery. It's exactly the same thing. It's, it didn't happen in our, and it, it, it hasn't happened in our time. So it is so, you know, go back and read a book, man, really. And read, that's, that's the number one problem with our country. That's the number one problem with our country. The number one problem with our country is that we don't focus on the priorities. Priorities. How are we gonna move in our economy? How are we gonna use our resources? How we can demand the government to do things good? How can we support people that they're poor? How can we make our economy better? How can we you know, create more jobs for women that they deserve more jobs? How can we help you know, single mothers? How can we help single fathers? How can we help for the 9.8 million kids that, that they don't have resources for education? How can we help 
kids that they're abandoned right now. 1.9 million kids abandoned. How can we help the 28 million critical in, in, in poverty and critical condition? How can we create more capitalism? How can we do that? And you're worried about when are they going to give us our land? When, uh, okay, let's let's give you an example. So if the United States says, all right, I'll give you back California. Are you going to be better? Is your life going to change? If they, if the United States says, all right, Mexico, all right, you want it? Okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay, your life is going to change? Yeah, they gave us back California. Are you going to use it exactly like you wanted to use? Or are you going to keep sitting down, watching on my feed, and saying, when are you going to give us back California? Or are you going to work for the land? This is the thing. You don't know what you're talking about. Man, I know what I'm talking about, Roberto. And if you don't like it, get out. I know what I'm talking about. I know my history. You don't know your history. And if you're Mexican, go back and read a book. This is what happened. This is what happened. In our history, we forgot the main things. The main things. We forgot the main things. And before we were so rich, we were so rich, we had the best cacao. Aztec culture, cafe, caña, maíz, frijol. We were rich on that and gold. We forgot that we have our resources right there and we don't explode them. Go, go to, I will tell you an example. Go to Tapachula. Go to Tapachula right now and ask. A person, I even ask Carlos, the journalist, and he tells you this, because we're in Tapachula and we're looking everywhere like, man, this is beautiful. It's a, it's a tropical paradise, man. This is beautiful. You're walking and you see a banana tree and you can pick a banana without asking nobody because it's a banana tree in the middle of the street. So we are rich, but we don't know that. The problem is, People are too lazy to work their lands. And it's part of the government's fault. Because the government doesn't teach their people and their economy how to be better. They prefer working on other countries' land to be working on their land. When we have everything around us. Our country is rich, man. Rich. But we prefer to go on outside because of our government, our, our of, of our, our country's rich, but we prefer to go outside because our government is so corrupt. If you don't live in Mexico, Roberto, and if you're not in the economy of Mexico, but if you don't have those, you don't have a right to be right here and telling me this. Really, you don't. A lot of them are really lazy and a lot of them are really poor. Two of them. A lot of them are really lazy and a lot of them are really poor. And that is part of the government's, that is all the government's fault. The rich get richer and the poor get poor. That's how our government works. So the farmers, they don't get the treatment that they deserve and the product is not sold to the world like it's supposed to be sold because of the government. And if the government treat good the farmers and the in the in the lower class citizens, that's how the revolution started. Taking away properties, taking away the land by the poor. We need to read, man. Read. Read the history. I'm just I'm just telling you facts that they're in the book, but if you want me to elaborate, going back on numbers and dates, let's just have a conversation. That is the thing that really, you know, it really depresses me how calling your own people lazy. What, you got, a, you got a problem with that? You got a problem with that, Jaime? You got a problem because I got, I got a lot of people that they're, if I'm calling people lazy, I'm not calling everybody lazy, but I'm calling some people lazy. Yes, they are. They got two hands, they got two legs, and they got two feet. 
They got two hands, they got two, they got two legs, and they got two feet. They can get up and get a job. I seen them right here. I seen them walking around, asking for money. And I seen them, well, two hands, two legs, strong, healthy. Why don't they get a job? Do you know why? It's not, some of them, it's not because they don't want to. We don't know their background. We don't know the level of poverty. We don't know if they don't have an ID. If they don't have a birth certificate. If they don't have possibilities. If they have a disease. Do you know who's, whose fault is it? But there's, let me tell you something, Jaime. There's always a way. There's always a way to get your money going. There's always a way. Don't want to make $5 a day. This Mexico. What do you want? What do you expect? It's Mexico. That's the economy. There you go. You're understanding now. Our government is so messed up that he provokes poverty. It provokes poverty. Our, our government is so corrupt that provokes the poverty. And provokes people to think that they cannot make it. And provokes people to have the mentality that they're poor and they cannot do anything. Do you know that there's a saying, and I will tell you this. There's a saying, not because you're poor means that you are dirty. And not because you're dirty means that you are poor. You can go into a poor woman's house and she can have a beautiful, clean house. You can have a beautiful, clean house. And you can go to a really rich woman's house and it will be a mess. That tells you a lot. Let me tell you, that example tells you a lot. Let me elaborate on that example. You can go into a poor woman's house and she will have all the plates ordered. The dishes will be clean. The beds will be made. The kids will be showered. And you go sometimes to a rich woman's house. They need somebody to make their beds. The house is a mess. The kids are not attended. The food is not made. Education on the house doesn't matter. What does that tell you? That example that I just told you. What does that tell you? It means that it doesn't matter if you're poor or rich. There's always a way to make it. There's always a way. I will tell you something right now. This connector right here. I can go out right now, right here, and sell it. This connector is 100 pesos. I can get out right now and tell everybody that I will sell it for 20 pesos. 20. And they will give me 10. There's always a way. There's always a way. It, it's just the way that we were raised. And the way our country it is. That's why I was so upset. Because we, the majority of us, in la mentalidad de Mexicano, esa es, the mentality of a Mexican, is being uh, conformista, uh, conformative. It's okay, you know, I, I, I made $20 today, it's okay. Ah, you know, I'm okay, $20. You know, or, or let's say that I, I made 200 pesos. It's okay. You know, I'm, I'm not going to push it. It's 200 pesos. I, it's, as for the taxi, for the food, and, you know, for the kids to go to school. And that's it. You know, it's okay. 200 pesos. No. It's not okay. It's not okay. The mentality of a person that is confirmative. That is, that is okay with, with what he's getting. No. That is why first class world countries 
They are where they are. That is why they want to run the world with vehicle industry. They want to run the world. My father left Mexico to have to give his kids better life and not not to be lazy. I agree with you. There's a lot of Mexicans are really they're really hardworking people. In another in another another person's land. Over here, listen to what I'm saying. You're not understanding. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. I'm not calling Mexicans lazy. I'm calling the people that they have the land and they can work the land. They're lazy because they don't want to work it. And it because they, they pay is cheap and it's all the government's fault. Listen to what I'm li listen to what I'm saying. First, I understand what I'm saying because if you don't understand what I'm saying, this is not it's not working. The thing right here, people, is that it's so upsetting that we are getting that we're getting, you know. That we don't go nowhere. Really, we don't go nowhere. We're stuck. We're stuck. We're really stuck. If we want to make it in Mexico, we want to go to another country. How come there's a lot of Mexican rich people over here? Well, they got good connections. They got, you know, good family members. They have great businesses. But there's your typical guy that, you know, he made an invention, a taco. That is a Cameron, the shrimp taco with cheese or something like that. And he made it. And he made it big. And he has an expansion. There's always a way. That's that's the thing. That a lot of Mexicans think, you know, man, I, no, I don't want to do it. I want to go to America. No, 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 I don't want to work in Mexico. I want to go to America, man. I want to go to America and over there, you know, make dollars. I don't want to make pencils. There's always a way over here, man. And a lot of these people, a lot of them, that they're walking around sometimes, and I see them asking for money, asking for money. A lot of them, they can ha they can have a job. They can provide, but they don't want to provide. They want to keep having that same mentality. That mentality of, no, oh my God, I can't make it. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, it's too this. Oh, it's too that. No, 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 no. Parece, cabrón. Ya trabajar. Like we say. Get up and work. Get up and work. And us working for the same land, working and fighting for the same rights, it will get better. Us demanding right now why don't they give us our land back my god man wow not even reading history understanding history that is the thing that you know it has us on a bucket man we're in a bucket and we can't get out of it because we're so stuck on that mentality that we need to go to America to make it. That's the mentality that we got. But we need to get to, we, we need to, uh, you know, we need to uh, invent something to make it. And that is the, the, that is the government's fault. Our government has made us comfortable on being poor. That is the fault of the, of the government of Mexico. Our government has made us comfortable on being poor. Our government has implemented laws and changed our constitution. And Mexicans have become comfortable. You don't see that happen in America, right? You see all these people constantly arguing, commentating. Our country has begun, become so comfortable of being poor. That every president that comes, listen, Jaime, every president that comes, what happens? Is the same S. The same problem. The same. I have seen six presidents in my life 
all of the six, they've been the worst example to a Mexican citizen. All of them. Seis por seis, 36. It's 36 years. 36 years. I'm 38. And I have seen, on my understanding, what I would, when, when, what was a president, you know, you, elementary and all that stuff. But I have seen six presidents. Out of the six presidents, none has been good. None. You got people from Mexico admiring another president that is Reagan. A lot of people admire Reagan over here in Mexico. A lot. Woo. You don't even imagine how many people admire Reagan. You got people in Mexico admiring another president. That's where I'm going. Our own government makes us comfortable of being poor. That's the mentality that they want to make us think. It is okay. It's, it's exactly the same thing of our government right now is implementing that my mass migration is okay. Share our land with other people. It's okay. That our government right now is saying that it's 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 okay to give benefits to other people from other from all across the world. From all across the world. First in Mexicans. It is okay. Our government is implementing that idea right now on Mexicans. And everybody's believing it. And if they don't believe it, they're standing right now. Some of them. They're opening their eyes. They're tired of being poor. They're tired of struggling. They're tired of are seeing, you know, the, 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 the narcos kill 15, 16, 20, 30, 40 people in a day. They're tired. They're really tired. So that's why I'm telling you that there should be priorities. This goes for the guy that it was telling me, why don't you tell Americans that give us back our land? Priorities right now. You're living in 2019. Worry about right now what is the solution. And if I just told you an example, if California was given back to you, what would what what are you going to do? Is the economy of Mexico gonna get better if you get California back? Do you think so? No. It's our government, the corruption of our government that has Mexico like that. And it's so, it, that's, you know, hope that you get it, uh, Jaime. Hope that you get it. Because we, you've been a follower of mine since the longest time. I'll send you a big hug, man. But hope that, I know that you get it. This is all the kind of subjects, man, that I've been thinking about. I want to say hi to everyone. How's everybody doing? Uh, follow my partner, Conservative Anthony, as he's running for Congress for District 16 of El Paso. And I know, Jaime, our people are really hardworking, man. Yes, they are, but they need to be hardworking in our country, in our land. They need to be hardworking in our country and our land. The way that they work the land and the field in the United States, that's how they're supposed to be over here. And the way that they demand in the United States for a better salary, that's how we're supposed to be on our land. They're demanding our government to give us a better salary, a better way of living. Stop the poverty. And... I just want to elaborate a few things, you know, before I move on to another subject. We ex we extended on this one, <laughs> you know, we extended on this one. I'm sorry if I if I if I if I go a little bit further on subjects. Uh, but um, <clears throat> the shelter that it was going to get built in Tijuana, the 5,000 people shelter, all of a the sudden they changed their minds. Now <laughs> they changed their minds. Apparently, look at this. Uh, the mayor that just got elected uh, in Tijuana, this guy owns the property. And this guy owns the property. Saludos, Francisco. I, I love you too, man. Uh, this guy owns the property, the new mayor. So the new mayor said that there's some, there's some, uh, he owns half of the property. And the other half is owned by, you know, 
private owners. And this other half of the other property by private owners, as soon as they knew that the mayor wanted to convert that bazaar into a shelter, all of these people started saying, hell no. We don't want that. Not only that, there were letters sent by the owners of the private schools, the the high school, the high schools, <coughs> the child care, the park, and businesses around the shelter to the mayor. That they didn't want it, the shelter. And now all of a sudden, this week, the mayor comes out with a statement saying, we're not going to get that shelter over there because we had a, 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 a problem with the people they own the, the you know the other property and you know because of that we're not going to put the shelter there but we're going to put uh we're going to put uh the shelter somewhere else you know in a warehouse we don't know yet where but we're going to build it <laughs> why don't you just say the truth why don't you just say that it's because of the people and it is because of the citizens of Tijuana that the shelter is not going to happen. You know why? Because it will be a failure for you to say that. Because you're failing. Your first step, your first project that you wanted to make a 5,000 people shelter for, you know, the caravan. And you just failed because of the people. The people stopped this, this 5,000 uh, shelter. Not you, Mayor, the people. So, uh, for everybody to know, supposedly, right now, the 5,000 people shelter, it backfired on the mayor, and they're not going to make it. <laughs> uh, you know, it got canceled. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing because now the mayor knows that the mayor knows that there's a lot of citizens that they don't want that that they don't want that in our city is that the Muslim shelter? No it's, no it's not you know and it's, it's a lot of things that's been happening over here and it makes you think a lot of, a lot of stuff like why our country is so stuck in the level of the economy that it doesn't that it doesn't grow. Really, our, our country's stuck. And sometimes you get upset, sometimes you get, you know, angry. And it is what it is. This is our country. Uh and hey hi Megan. How you doing Megan? Send you a big hug. Uh and you know it's it's so amazing that like we went to Guatemala and I put you an example of rocks that is the, the rock analogy and we have exactly the same thing over here in Mexico exactly the same thing now people Mexico Mexican people we're full with pride and we get mad when they say us the truth in our face we get mad regarding you know us migrating to another country or us doing something wrong illegally and we have exactly the same thing. We're doing exactly the same thing. That needs to stop. We need to get better as a country, better the economy. It's, it's, it's a working process. But believe me, socialism is not the answer. Socialism is not the answer. This country was built on capitalism. It's capitalism. It was built on capitalism. You saw corn on the field. I will buy that nice piece of land. Get that piece of land going sell corn start my own little business you know socialism is not the answer for our country and it's never going to be so I want to say hi to everyone it was a quick hi for everyone we're going to go back to the field tomorrow uh, just to get you a little prepped up for for uh, for tomorrow's show uh, busy day uh, tomorrow uh, and also on Wednesday we're going to have another busy day Thursday probably I'm going to travel to somewhere 
uh, close by the city for you guys to bring you guys the news. And also, I want to, I want to, uh, yeah, I want to thank. Uh, go ahead. I want to thank. Uh, uh, you know the support of all of you guys. There is a plan to go to Venezuela, and it's uh, it is happening. Uh, it is happening. We're probably going to go to Venezuela, and uh, you know it's uh, it's 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 going to be amazing. We're planning to go to Venezuela. Uh, another thing that before I go, uh, you can become a supporter now at uh, Border Network News page. What are the things that uh, when you're coming to Rosarito? Uh, you there, Rosie Manuel? You there in Rosarito? <laughs> uh, you can become a supporter at Border Network News, and I think I don't I don't know the monthly fee, and you're gonna get uh, three shows from Anthony and myself. We're gonna start doing a show uh, together, a one hour show, probably one hour, hour and thirty minutes show. Uh, together we're gonna do that show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you wanna, so you if you want to become a supporter at uh, Border Network News page, go to Border Network News page. I don't know how the process is. Really, I'm I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't understand how the process is for that. But if you guys want to be a supporter, uh, you know, whenever you wanna you wanna support. There's the app right there, and we're gonna give it like probably this month, so we can start the next month uh, doing the shows Monday, Mondays, Wednesdays, and, and Fridays. Uh, me and Anthony will be live, uh, getting phone calls, giving away uh, you know probably stickers or you know a shirt or something like that, and accepting messenger calls uh, from whatever you guys want to comment on the show. And you know all those things. They're gonna be on the support group show uh, on Border Network News page, just for everybody to know. So if you guys want to know that, I'll, I will be live probably today with Anthony later on tonight, and you know, <clears throat> and explain uh, with him live how to become a supporter in uh, Border Network News for you guys to know. Are you going to upload your other videos from Guatemala to Ch and Chapas? Yes, I'm going to upload them. The thing is that I, I'm not the, uh, you know, Ben wanted to do a video with, uh, 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 you know, uh, kind of like a story with all the videos. So I, until he says, you know, it's okay, man, you know, I'm, he's trying to make a story. So I don't want to ruin his plan. So, you know, that's, that's the, uh, Barbara Royal, Oscar, my, please, uh, what's going on, Barbara? What's going on? Talk to me. <laughs> Ever whoever wants to uh, wants to uh, become a supporter, go to our page. They're they're explaining right now, right there, how do you can become a supporter? Uh, probably we're gonna give uh, you know this month. Uh, let's see how many supporters we can get. Uh, this month and if we get in the next couple of weeks uh, you know a uh, good group we, we can start you know the the border network news support group uh, shows that they're gonna be in Monday Wednesdays and Fridays me and Anthony will be live uh, for an hour an hour and uh, 15 hour and 30 minutes doing a live show talking about you know he is more emphasized on politics uh, me you know I'm emphasized on every subject so uh, that's that's the thing. What do you think about Puebla, Mexico? Puebla, Puebla is a beautiful place, man. It has the best mole. <laughs> when are you going to go back to the border? Which one? Uh, which which border, Barbara? Again, I I get a make. A bet again, I get a make a co. I don't understand. Uh, bet. Pelosi checking out Mexico lately. Uh, apparently, uh, Pelosi was sending people to uh, to Guatemala after after we were over there. And apparently, I don't know this. I don't know if it is a rumor or not. But that that's what they were saying. That Pelosi was uh, sending people, Democrats, over there 
to encourage, you know, no, no, don't pro don't protest against the third world secure country. Make it good, you know. And a lot of people are against uh, the majority of uh, Guatemala people are, are against being a third world secure country. Another comment, people, before I go. I'm planning to go to Querétaro. Oh, Querétaro is beautiful. I already been there a couple times in my life. I went to, when I was young, probably when I was, uh, what was it, 17, I went for a national tournament, uh, for a boxing national tournament. And then I went back uh, in, when I was 19 or 20, I think so, I went for a soccer tournament, a national soccer tournament. So I've been in Querétaro. Querétaro is the cleanest city in Mexico. Beautiful city. Uh, okay. What what's Cancun look like? Cancun. I went to Cancun when I was in my late 20s. Cancun is real nice. It's real beautiful. Real real nice and real beautiful. No. Uh, early 20s early 20s I went with my family to Cancun it's real nice beautiful man Chetumal Islas Mujeres those places are real beautiful Oscar uh, please be careful going to Venezuela oh yes uh, we know how it is over there <laughs> when will you be visiting the pastor at his shelter probably you know in the week in the week I will be visiting him I will visit him Another question from you guys before I go. Karen Jones, thank you. No, thank you. Another question before I go, people. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your support. I will be uh, live tomorrow as usual. Today probably we're gonna do a video, a live video, to announce the, you know, the uh, the support uh, group or the become a supporter at uh, at Border Network News later on with Anthony. And let's see how that goes. Also, uh, you know, I want to say thank you to everyone, to this uh, America's Boys and all these uh, people, phenomenal people, great people, and. Uh, follow follow my partner, Conservative Anthony, as he's running for Congress at District 16. And I want to give a quick message. There's a lot of people trying to do bad stuff. And only God is the one that can judge people. And only God is the one that takes the right path for people. And only him is the one that can tell you that if you can make it or not. And it depends on your fate. How do you do things? But like I said before, it doesn't even matter what you post or what you say about my partner. It doesn't even matter, really. What matters is what you do on the ground. How you help people. If you're really going to work for the people. For El Paso. If you're really going to help the poor people. And if you really put your heart into it. That's what matters. I think that the American people are kind of tired like Mexicans. That they're sick and tired of these people wearing a tie, a nice suit. And with their bachelor's degrees from whatever they want to say I got one but you know it's I don't got one from Harvard and all these places and they're going in there and not doing anything about their city going in there and not doing anything for their country so it's better to have a real person with real ideals 
and to have a person that really has a heart. Do you know why they are, are attacking constantly, my partner? Do you know why? Do you think if he was irrelevant, they would be attacking him? No. They're attacking them. They're attacking him because they know that he's winning. They're finding. They're searching. Oh my God, I need to search. I need to find more stuff of him. I need to I need to say more bad things about him. I need to find more information. Oh my God, I can't do this. Let's talk about his record constantly. Let's make a page about his record. Now, oh my God, he was holding this. Let's make, let's talk about that. And if he was irrelevant, they wouldn't even put attention to him. They wouldn't even say anything about it. They would not care. They wouldn't say anything. Why am I worried about this guy with long, long sleeve tattoos? Why am I worried about this guy? I'm going to win. I don't got nothing to worry about. I will be a classy person and I will fight with class. But they're worried. So they play dirty. And they play real dirty. And I will tell you one thing. Just for you to know. I will tell you one thing. Whatever you pulled out is already out there. People don't care about Anthony's past. They don't care. They care about Anthony's present and what he's capable of doing for his people with his heart. They care about that. They don't care about his past. They care about his present. What he's doing. How he is 100% for Apostle. That is what is more important than criticizing, posting, social media. You're never going to win like that. Let's be gentlemen and accept the fact that my partner has gigantic possibilities on winning. Big possibilities on winning. And playing like that dirty, it makes you look even worse. It makes you look like you're hungry to get people on your side. It makes you look bad at a late mature life. Is this what it is? People don't care. They care about what he's going to do for his city. People don't care about the pages that they're putting up and all this stuff. They don't care. Really, they don't. They care about what he's going to do for his city. And believe me, mark my words, he's going to win. He's going to win. And when he wins, he's going to shake everybody else's hand that it was fighting against him. Because he's a gentleman. Mark my words. Nice talking to you guys. It was great talking to you guys. Have a great day. We'll talk to each other a little bit on. Peace and love, everybody. And always your country first.